A few weeks ago, Claire Safis from Bon Appetit posted a video where she made her own version of an Oreo cookie. At one point in the video, she mentions that they attempted to have a stamp made so they could have a custom design on the cookies. She even showed a picture of the design on her phone. Unfortunately, for some reason they were not able to get the stamp on time, so she ended up getting some food safe silicone and making a mold of some Oreo cookies. I thought, this looks like a job for 3D printing, even for beginners. So I took a screenshot of the picture and I processed it in Photoshop, ran through a couple revisions and behold, the Claire Saffitz Oreo cookie blank. Now, this was printed and sanded and then sprayed with primer to smooth out the surface and round over the edges. And this could use a little more cleanup. So I wouldn't necessarily want to use this in direct contact with my food. So we'd basically just make a silicone mold like she did in the video. I'm not going to go into the printing or finishing part of this project in this video. This video is all about showing how easy it is to make your own cookie blank if you have a 2D design. This design could be made in any number of ways. You could even just draw something and take a picture of it. I'm going to use a design that I made in Photoshop. Then I'm going to convert it into a 3D object using Microsoft's 3D Builder. If you have Windows 10, it may already be installed. And if not, you can get it for free on the Windows Store. Heck, you can even install it on an Xbox One. I'm sure a lot of you out there don't have Windows 10, but the basic technique should transfer to other programs as well. Before we begin, Let's go over the basic navigation controls of 3D Builder. If I hold down the left mouse button and drag, I'm rotating the view. If I hold down the right mouse button and drag, I can move the view. If I use the mouse wheel in the middle button of the mouse, I can zoom in and out. Over here on the right side, we have an items tab that lets us select the different objects. From the splash screen, either click open or new scene. I click new scene, so I'm gonna click add, gonna load the image, gonna select the image, that I have set made up. This is the Cookie Buck 2. Oh, Cookie Buck PNG. Click open, and here we have our image. What we want to do is inverse it and remove the texture. We have some options at the top. I'm going to leave everything the way it's at, and let's leave the method to contour. If the object shows up as being invalid, just click that, and we'll wait for the computer to do its thing. When it gets done doing its thing, we are presented with our object but we need to resize it. So click on the scale thing. I'm gonna uncheck the little padlock so I can scale it in different directions independently. So I'm gonna set the width to 45 millimeters because the cookie's 45 millimeters. And we're gonna click the uh, depth arrow handle and I'm gonna change that to 45 millimeters. And let's... Uh, rotate around and I'm going to click the the height arrows and I'm going to set that to 3.5 millimeters. Now let's go up to insert and insert the cylinder. Click on that. I'm going to rescale this similar to the other one. I want the widths to be a little smaller so I'm going to make this 43 millimeters and I want the uh, same thing for the depth. So click on that handle and uh, name this 43 millimeters and we'll click the handle on the top to get our height and we'll set that to 2.5 and we may adjust that later. So now I click the move tool and I move this disc uh, back onto our build plate or whatever this is called. Uh, grab the handle on the top, drag it down so it's sitting on the floor. I want to pick my other artwork, make sure it's the only thing that's highlighted. So let's drag it on top and let's see if we can get it lined up directly. So I'm gonna slide it around, looking at it from the bottom, trying to make sure it's lined up. Um, are there any tools for actually lining it up? I'm not that familiar with this program, actually. I'm not seeing any centering things. Way to center these two. So let's just rotate it around, uh, center the view, move these things around manually until we have them lined up the way we want. Now let's lower our top artwork and drag it down onto the disc we want them overlapping, but we don't want the floor to be directly on, in line with each other because it'll just take longer to process and it may have problems because, yeah, one big circle and a whole bunch of little details lined up in the same plane. Not a great idea. We're changing the scale of the bottom of the disc. We're going to raise it up so it's 3.14 millimeters. Now make sure they're both selected. And I'm going to switch over to the Edit tab. 
and click on the merge tool. It's going to take a little while to merge these things together. It depends on how fast your computer is. If you don't do this step, the software that is used to tell the 3D printer what to do, it may separate these out into separate pieces, and we want them to be brought in as one. So we're going to click the Save button, pick a name. I'm going to save it as an STL, and that's really all there is to this process. Let's just click Save here, and we have our 3D object saved. And this can now be sent to your 3D printer to print, or maybe you have a friend who has a 3D printer, and if you don't, some libraries nowadays have 3D printers in them, and uh, also you may have a local maker space. And if you don't have any access to any 3D printers on your own, there are some online services that you can actually send the file to, and they'll send you a physical object back. I should point out that I designed this to be molded like the cookies in the video. You could 3D print a stamp, but there are some concerns about using 3D printed pieces in food prep. In this case, I used PLA plastic, which is plant-based, so it should be mostly okay, but I don't know what other additives were added to this particular filament, and there may have been some other contaminants picked up in the nozzle. You can get food-safe PLA, but even then there are concerns because the plastic is laid down in tiny layers, which could collect bacteria that could not be easily cleaned out. And unlike silicone, PLA will likely soften and deform if you try to sterilize it with heat. So if you do want to make custom cookie cutters or stamps for your food, it might be best to only use them once unless you use some other food safe process to smooth out the layer lines. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. This is a bit different than a lot of the other videos on my channel, but if you uh, enjoyed it and you'd like to see more videos like this, please let me know and uh, maybe I'll start doing more. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day.